Hello everybody, my name is David. Thank you for joining me for the question and answer videos today that I do every single Monday. I want to welcome new subscribers to the channel. Thank you very much for subscribing to this channel. This is a question and answer video where I'm asked, answering everyone's questions from last Monday, last Q&A. And if you guys have a question, just go down in the comment section, ask me anything you want. I'll answer them in the next Q&A next Monday, okay? Um, I have lots of stuff to tell you and lots of good questions, so please stay tuned. Um, first, first, well, first I'd like to bring up something that I haven't talked about in a couple weeks or so, and that's Shane's Law Petition. Shane was a victim of a really bad uh, narcissistic smear campaign, and it um, really affected him and his wife. And it was really, really bad. If you ever read the story, it was awful. But he didn't know what to do. He, he tried to get help everywhere. He couldn't get help. And Shane, unfortunately, took his own life. But somebody um, started a petition so that Shane won't die in vain and to help other people who are suffering from this kind of abuse, this attack. So if you guys could please just take a, a few seconds out of your time and follow the link down below in the description box that says Shane's Law Petition. It'll take you to it. All you got to do is check it that you agree with it, that you support it. And that would be really, really good for all of us, right? And people in the future who are being attacked by a narcissist in public like that. Um, I also like to recommend something every week. This week I'm going to recommend another thing you guys should be taking, and that's magnesium, an essential mineral that this kind of stress and trauma usually depletes us of. It is, I think, the fourth most prominent uh, mineral in our bodies. It helps with heart rhythm. It prevents constipation. Helps with seizures, asthma. It, it helps produce and maintain healthy nerves, muscles, and bones. Um, it helps maintain sugar levels and other various psychotic disorders. So this is something that, um, that you must have, and I promise most of you are low in, so I always recommend taking magnesium. What I found was something called Quad Magnesium by Vitamunk on uh, Amazon, as always. And this is doctor-formulated unique blend of the top four different forms of magnesium. So this is, it contains magnesium glycinate colada, it, it contains orotate, taurinate, and dimagnesium. So four essential forms that help you absorb it. And really, really important. And without magnesium, I wrote down some things um, that it can affect neck and back pain, anxiety, fatigue, migraine attacks, muscle spasms, weakness, loss of appetite, nausea, insomnia, muscle twitches, and it is always depleted under stress. I mean, these, these are the symptoms uh, of, of emotional abuse and trauma, right? If you guys are experiencing these things, why not just buy a cheap bottle of magnesium that will, that will at least help? This, these are the kinds of things I'm talking about, about committing to your own recovery and investing in it, okay? I know a lot of you don't have much money, but some of these things are under 20 bucks and you can take it for months, and it really makes a difference in your life, okay? So, that's, that's that. Uh, what else? I think that's it. And we can get started with the questions. Yeah, let's get started. So, first question is from Fit Mama in California. Hello. My question is, will you consider a live Q&A or live video on a topic? Today, I am more confident in knowledge I gained from your videos and daily self-love. Thanks in advance. That is awesome. I'd love to see that. Um, yeah, I've considered it. I've almost done it before. Um, I just feel like, and, and, and I'm not against it, so I'll, I'll do it. I've done live videos, and I do them every two weeks with Nova Gibson, and she's a mental health practitioner based in Australia. And uh, I post them every two weeks. You guys see them about an hour and a half long. <clears throat> they are live. We answer people's questions. And I find it pretty difficult to, to do. And I don't get, definitely don't get to everyone's questions. You can't read them all. It's not easy. Uh, it's hard to have time to answer everyone's questions. People get missed, skipped, stuff like this. I feel like this way, people can really an answer or ask their question Right, take your time, print it out correctly. I take it and I think about it, and I get to answer and give you a, a, the best answer that I can. I just feel like I, I think I'm answering about three times more questions. 
that way because it also g uh, gathers up over the week instead of just you have one hour window to ask me a question. I may not see it. I may not read it. I may not get to it. Hope that makes sense. But if you guys, you guys are more than welcome to go and follow the link on any of those videos I've made with Nova and go to her Facebook page and you can watch those live and you can ask me any question you want on there. Any of you guys can. It doesn't have to be just topic related. I mean, every topic we choose is about narcissists, narcissistic abuse and how to recover from it. So any question that you guys have is usually about that. It applies. Feel free to go there and watch it, support it. Okay. Thanks very much. Next question is from Azra, and I don't know where you're from, which, oh, you're from Florida. Thank you. And that reminds me, if you guys can please, all I ask is just tell us where you are. Tell us your location. Give us a city, state, country, planet, hemisphere, whatever, just so we know kind of where you're at. It just, uh, I like it. I know other people really do enjoy that. It helps us feel connected. It helps us validate our own experience, things like this, so we know that it's not just us. It's not just a, our country, it's not just our city, just our community, our neighborhood, or it's not just my job, it's not just me that picks these people. It's, it's happening everywhere, okay? So Azra asks, thank you for all you do and sharing your experience so you can help others. You are welcome, thank you. I'm from Florida and my question is, when, the, when in the love bombing stage, when the narc sees all the good qualities in you, idealization, is it all a lie or they can actually see the good in people and just exaggerate? Um, I, you know, I can't speak for anybody individually, but generally this idealization is something we all do, Ezra. And I'm sure you did it too, didn't you? Didn't you kind of idealize him and thought that he was pretty great and now you're realizing he's not? So it's something that we do as, as, as human beings and it helps uh, bond and it helps bring couples together, stay together produce babies, you know, the only thing really that our brain is ever programmed for at birth is stay alive, procreate. So we're always looking for danger and we're always trying to have babies. <laughs> it's a natural thing. So idealization is something we all do. Um, you could say it's a spectrum, right? Some do it more than others. Um, so I, I truly believe that most people idealize and I believe that most people are sincere about it at first. The, the idea is to be conscious and aware of this and not let it happen, right? Not let the other person do it so much because it should feel uncomfortable. The healthier you are, somebody, you know, all over you and telling how much they like you in the first week shouldn't feel comfortable. It shouldn't feel good. It shouldn't feel special. It should feel kind of scary and kind of gross. <laughs> so, okay. So we all do it. Just be aware of it and try and calm it down. You know, we meet people in the first week or two, we tell our best friends how amazing they are and all we're doing is we're telling them what our idealized mate is. When we say, oh, they're like this and they're like that and they're like this and they're like that. You already had that in your mind before you met this person. They just checked all the boxes because that's what you're looking for. We, we, we see what we're looking for. I hope that makes sense, Azra. Um, you know, like I said, I, I couldn't tell you what your ex personally felt or anything, but generally... Humans idealize and, and they mean it. Thank you. Audrey from Canada. Hello, Audrey. How long have you been healed, David? How long did it take? When did you realize you were healed? How did you feel? Um, thank you for asking, Audrey. And, you know, honestly, it's so hard to put an exact time on it. You know what I like to say is I'm always healing, right? I'm always learning because that's what healing is. So I'm always learning. I always have something more I can learn from my past experiences. I truly believe that. How, how do we know everything about anything? There's always more to learn. I only have my perception. Um, that's why getting others is great. But generally, let, let, let me put it this way. I haven't been in an abusive relationship in almost nine years, about nine years. And I spent several years doing everything I thought I, I, everything that I knew. And it wasn't enough. It wasn't until I literally found the information. So I went like four years, something like that, doing everything I could from work, physical health, financial, anything I could do to feel better and do better and have a better life. And when I found this information about four years after that, that's when everything really started clicking fast. And as I was doing this, as I was learning and understanding and healing, I realized that I kept thinking I was healed. Maybe another few months, six months, a year went by, and I'm like, no, I, I've learned so much more, I feel so much better. Now I'm healed. 
and it just kept doing that. And and that's that's less and far between now. Um, so you know you're healed when things don't hurt anymore. When when something that you're healing from actually feels good, not bad. That's a good sign that you've healed, and that's how I feel. Um, so everybody takes different times. Everybody reacts to this stuff differently, right? So for me to tell you the exact time on it, that would mean, that would make other people go, oh, I better do it by that time, or oh, I'm not healed in that time, or man, it takes that long, right? If I had all the people and all the information right away, I would have healed faster and done better faster. It's a process that almost never ends, never. Because even though I believe I'm healed, it doesn't hurt. I don't, you know, I feel good about it and don't make bad choices and stuff because of this. But I'm still learning. I'm still learning. As I find information to help you guys in videos, I learn more about myself and my experiences. And that's life. That's what we should do. Hope that makes sense. Thanks, Audrey, for asking. <clears throat> so Stacy from Michigan wants to know. I was with my ex nine and a half years and got engaged to him probably one and a half to maybe two years into the relationship. We were together nine and a half years and never ended up getting married because he was never ready and always had an excuse why we couldn't at the time. Last year at the end of April, I caught him cheating and kicked him out. I'm sorry. He ended up moving in with the other woman the same week I kicked him out. Then I found out last August he went out and bought her a $7,000 ring and asked her to marry him. They got married last month. So my question is, why did he marry so soon, but never actually got around to marrying me? Is it because he needed to lock her down ASAP or what? So, a lot of people ask me this stuff, right? You have this long relationship with somebody, and the second it's over, they go boom right to somebody else and marry them and all that. It's impulsivity, guys. So, these people are already emotionally um, imbalanced, right? They're already uh, unstable, because they don't deal with their emotions correctly and they don't give themselves what they need. So it, it creates a lot of different emotions throughout their day, throughout their life. They're unstable and it makes us impulsive and make quick choices and decisions that we regret bad ones that, that don't say who we are and, and maybe sabotage us and stuff. So this relationship does affect narcissists. It, it affects this man, I can tell. How do I know? The fact is that he doesn't like to be vulnerable, so he won't show that to you or tell you. And he has to act like everything's okay, his ego, because that's who he is. That's it. There's nothing more. He felt more unstable from this relationship. People feel like failures from failed relationships. This causes more emotions, more intensity. It made him more impulsive. He got more scared. He felt more vulnerable. All these things. So what do I have to do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I don't want to feel like this again. I don't want to lose another person. I don't, whatever it is. I can't tell you what he's thinking, but I can tell what these actions mean. Okay. So he immediately jumped to what he thought would be a good idea. Let's make, let's do something big. Let's do something huge now. Right. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, he wouldn't commit to you for so long and then it's immediate commitment to someone new. Also realize that the more that they get attached to you, the more they invest, if they even invest anything, the more scared they are of being vulnerable. Maybe the, more, maybe the intense fears they have of commitment, of intimacy, of abandonment start to play, start to come into play. And so uh, it makes it harder to commit to you. Whereas someone they just met, they aren't invested, they don't feel vulnerable, they're not afraid, it's all idealization, it's all hormones on go. And, and with, in the relationship he was with you, those hormones have been depleted, just like you. And so he meets someone else, woo woo, let's get married. He reacts completely like this to his emotions. No thinking, no planning, no logic. Boom, impulsivity. I'm going to move across the world, around the world. I'm going to go quit my job. I'm going to end all my relationships. I'm going to get married. I'm going to whatever. Impulsivity. That's why. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't feel stable. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know what he's doing, trust me. But he'll act confident because he thinks if people believe I'm confident, I am. It covers up my insecurities and shame. And it doesn't. It doesn't work. So he'll get married to this person 
And regardless, he'll probably, if he abused you, he'll start abusing her eventually because he doesn't know what else to do. That's what he resorts to. That's his, that's his brain thought, thought pattern. Resort to this. This happens, do this. If, if the girl I like does this, then do this to her. Run. Punish her. Go to somebody else. Cheat on them. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just ask me more. Thank you. Uh, Coco from Virginia. Hello. I'm struggling with the discard from a covert after 22-year marriage, 27-year total. I'm sorry. I know that I need to move on and can't. And we don't just move on. We need to heal. I'm devastated. How long is the suffering and obsession of why phase? That's up to you. And I'm not, you know, we're all different. I can't put a time on these things, especially for somebody else. You do what you need to do, and it gets better faster. Get help, professional help, write, talk, really learn everything that's happened. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Start, start introspecting, start looking inside yourself and study your childhood and find out why this happened. Okay? Find out why this happened and learn the truth about everything and take a lot of time doing it. Commit to it. Okay? This is bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If he hurts you, don't try to do anything with him anymore. This is done. This is over. And we go heal on our own, away from that person. And um, get help. Get support. We can't do these things by ourselves, guys. We need family. We need friends. We need therapists. We need life coaches, counselors. We need teachers. Okay? The more you invest, the better outcome you'll have and faster. Okay? Suffering and obsession of why. You need to find those answers. Okay? You're probably experiencing tons of cognitive dissonance. So you have labeled every bad feeling, every bad experience, everything he's done. You have put a label on it that it's okay. You've accepted it logically. So when you think back at these, all these emotional um, incidences and experiences and, and traumas, you, your brain keeps going to, it's not his fault, it's, it's mine. You need to work this out with somebody. Okay? Somebody did this to you. Somebody can help you. I'm sorry. Good luck. Witchy Bitchy from Southern California. Hello. Dealing with my husband who's not speaking to me. We had an argument and he slapped a candle near me. Not lit. On the ground. I like how you had to make sure it wasn't lit. It's all, if you throw candles at people, it's okay as long as they're not lit. Sorry. I had to. You said it shattered. He still hasn't cleaned it, knowing we have kids. I should have known better any time I get mad, he gets angry, violent. He punched the wall and gave me an evil look after the candle incident. And you know what? I'm sorry to say, but I cut off. It didn't show me the rest of your question. I'm guessing it's what, what should I do? What do I do? So... Let's sharpen our awareness. Let's just be really conscious of what's going on. And now we need to start thinking about your children, right? So it can't be all what you want, what you want to do. And you can't keep trying in a relationship where not just you're suffering, but the children are. He, he's abusing you, okay? This is abuse. A husband not speaking to his wife is abusive. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Silent treatment in a marriage? No way. No way do we do that. Asking for some time to think? Okay. Right? I need some time. I need some time to think, please. I'm going to go away and I'll be gone for this long and this is when I'll come back. Oh, I'm not back the time I said. I'm going to call them and let them know I'm okay. These are fucking responsibilities and accountability. These are things that we need in relationships, and we need to hold other people to it, okay? He's abusing you in front of your children, and he's creating a dangerous environment for the whole family, the household. What are you going to do about it? Not him. 
What are you? What is mom going to do about it? We're not going to wait. We're not going to hope, cross our fingers. We're not going to keep taking the abuse from him. We're not going to keep trying to change him, control him, get him help. He's made his bed, he's laid in it, and he's, very, he's made it very clear what his choice is, that he doesn't care. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about the children. He doesn't care about the marriage. He doesn't care, okay? How do I know that? He's showing it. He doesn't like that. He can change it. We don't just say it. We show it. You have no security. You have no privacy, I bet. All these things. You don't have them. Your children doesn't have them. He's abusing all of you. Get out of there, Mom. Okay? Get out of there. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Get help. Get people to help you do this. Okay? And don't, don't stop. Children involved, we can't wait. And, and, and staying together for the children means you're going to allow him to abuse them more and longer, okay? Get them away from him. Document all of this. Video record the candle on the floor. And video record him when you ask him to clean up the candle he threw. And then see what he does with the video camera on him. I'm not kidding. But this should, this should come after you're going to divorce him and you know that. You don't keep staying in a relationship and do this and, you know, we're, we're trying to work it out. No, that's, I'm trying to divorce you and show the courts that you're a horrible, abusive husband and father. And then you get out of there. I'm telling you, get out of there. This is dangerous. Good luck. Zaheer, or Z, from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Z. My question of when it comes to no contact... Do I cut all the mutual friends that still enable her? She admits to being BPD with narcissistic tendencies. I understand that their perception of the person is different to mine due to the experiences, so they could never understand, but after all the slander and bad behavior towards me, I feel a sense of betrayal. These friends know what happened and even agreed with me, yet it feels like they are two-faced and that they still support her. Okay, so, who am I? I'm a man of principle. My morals are... Abuse is wrong. Lying is wrong. Let's just say abuse. Abuse is wrong. Okay? So, I'm not going to have friends that abuse other people. Period. That says who I am. I, won't, I don't like it. I don't tolerate it. I don't accept it. I won't be around it. Okay? So, if these people know that someone abused you, and that's okay with them, they're showing you who they are. Okay? And if that's not who they are, then they are not making choices that best say who they are. They're unstable. I'd stay away from them. And as you get healthier, you will see it better. These people don't offer security, don't offer safety. They're not honest. They're not loyal. If those things are important to you, don't have people like that in your life. And you'll feel a better, you'll have a more stable sense of who you are. And you'll feel better. Okay, and this, this will give you confidence. If you, do, if you make choices like this, there'll be good outcomes and it'll give you, it'll be better than, if you make a choice to end friendships with people that are nothing like you, that do not hold morals principle, the same ones as you do, and you, you get rid of them out of your life, that's a, that's a good thing. You'll feel really good about yourself. You'll have confidence to do it again and it'll be easier and easier and easier. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Uh, hi, David. Could you please talk more about the oxytocin spray and exactly what its benefits are? Yeah, you bet. Uh, two weeks ago, I recommended I recommend something every Q&A. Two weeks ago, I recommended an oxytocin spray. Oxytocin acts as a neurotransmitter. Oxytocin is, I'm not going to get totally into what oxytocin does and explain all that. But I'll tell you that it is beneficial for social interaction and social reproduction. And almost all adults are low or have none. After trauma, emotional abuse, none. As we get older, less. Okay? It's, it's called the love hormone. And it's going to help with bonding with people. It's going to help with trusting people. And it even helps with physical pain. Especially long-lasting, repetitive pain. Uh, it's everything that, that we need. 
it's the most, because I'm telling you guys, the most important things you guys can do is start having nice, good relationships with people, contacts, intimacy with people. I'm not talking sexual. I'm talking friends. I'm talking touching people. I love you. Hugs, giving gifts. This raises oxytocin and allows us to trust more. We don't trust people right now, right? We're hypervigilant. We see the bad and negativity everywhere. This will change that. It will change it. Talk to your doctors about it. Doctors don't like to deal with hormones, and they may not even um, give you the hormone. But what I have to say to doctors like that is, before you turn down your patient's request, are you aware of their levels of oxytocin, where they're at? Because it's not good to have too much or too little of hormones. So if a doctor says, oh no, you don't need that, but you don't have any, what does he know? What does he know? You know, you, you, you can't tell me I don't need help with my blood sugar if you don't know what my blood sugar is, right? So this is something we need. This is something help us and benefic benefic beneficial for us in our recovery, okay? And for our lives, the rest of our lives. So this is, this is actually offered on Amazon and I put the link in the description box on two weeks ago in part one. Always part one, description box, link to my recommendations. Maybe I'll make a whole long list somewhere, maybe on my website or something. But um, look into it. Look into it, research it, talk to your doctor about it. Out of all the things I recommend, this might be the one that helps you the most, okay? Thank you for asking. Uh, hey Dave, it's David, by the way. Thank you. Billy from Massachusetts, hello Billy. Can you speak on the toll that stress, lying, cheating, running from oneself, no empathy, etc., has on the health of people with cluster B disorders? Thanks. And I'm guessing you mean physical health, right? Our bodies. And it, it, it doesn't have to be people with cluster B disorders. It's us too, right? If we lie, cheat, you know, uh, uh, have tons of stress, and that's what it comes down to. This is stress. This is stress. So if I have a tree that produces lemons, okay? And I have this tree and it produces lemons for a couple of years and then eventually it stops, or let's say the lemons don't ripen. They're still green. And they drop, boom, boom, from the tree when they usually do. But they're not ripe. Why? Why is that? Stress. Stress. Eliminate stresses. Well, you've got wind, you've got too much, too little sun, too much, too little rain. You've got diseases and things in the soil, right? All kinds of things. You start eliminating these things and the, the, the fruit starts producing again. The tree starts producing fruit. If the tree doesn't have what it's need, it won't produce the fruit. It'll save any reserves it can to grow, to stay alive. If that's how you guys live, that's all you may do, stay alive, not produce fruit. Your life will not be fruitful. Stress, stress causes disease, period. Number one killer. How's that? How's that? Number one killer. People talk about alcoholism, smoking cigarettes, stuff like this. Why do they do it? Stress. It's the number one killer. All of it. Stress. You guys are living such stressful lives in these relationships and then recovering from them. I'd be very careful. Very careful. People cannot, cannot live like this for very long. They die. They get disease. It's hard on your organs. It's hard on your eyes. Your eyes won't work as well. Your digestive tract. You'll have stomach problems, intestinal problems. Many of you already do. I, I think that answers it. Disease. It causes disease. It causes cancer. This stress causes hormones to go woom, 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 woom. That causes disease. Too much hormones, testosterone causes disease. Too little testosterone, you're in trouble. Okay? This, this, the, it, it, it will affect your skin. It'll affect your hair. It'll affect your nails. Your hair will fall out. It'll get coarse, brittle, break. You'll get skin diseases. Everything. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. 
and and you're not I've never seen anyone healthy going through this stuff your biography becomes your biology think about that okay thank you for asking Anita from Belgium hello why do narcissists stare at you my ex narc did a lot that a lot it made me uncomfortable sometimes when we went to bed I faked that I was sleeping but I felt he was staring at me why do they do that what is going on in their head so and you're from Belgium I already said that. Thanks, Anita. So, people, you know, I like the people watch, but the staring, the staring, I truly believe it's a, it reflects a very unstable sense of self. I don't know who I am. The more confident we are in who we are, the less we judge others and the less we're fear of being judged. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. The more we are stable in our own self, meaning... I like, I, I, I want honesty, loyalty, self-respect, respect for others. And as long as I behave that way and my choices reflect that, I'm stable. Okay? The more I don't, right? The more I, if I lie to someone, hurt myself, hurt somebody else, let somebody hurt me, the less stable I am. And the more I will stare at other people, observe them, and start mimicking them. Right? Get it? Hope that makes sense. Thanks, Anita. And that is the end of part one. I'll see you in part two, guys. All right? Thank you. It comes on in a half an hour. Always half an hour increments. I'll see you in part two. Bye.